Kittle just got a major update, and if you're a blogger, content creator, or small business owner looking for an easy way to create stunning graphics without hiring a designer, this is huge. Hey, what's up everybody? Ben here from blogwithben.com, and in this video, I'll walk you through Kittle's latest features, show you how they make designing faster and easier than ever, and give you a hands-on look at what's new. And whether you're making social media posts, blog graphics, or even branding materials, Kittle's new tools are designed to help you create professional designs in minutes. And real quick, before we get started, if you get any value out of this video, I would greatly appreciate it if you would subscribe to the Blog With Ben YouTube channel, helps me bring you more resources, and it keeps you up to date with all of the AI, web, and tech trends happening throughout the year. But either way, thank you so much for all your support. All right, with that being said, let's get started. The updated Kittle interface now has a modern, minimalist design that strips away unnecessary clutter, creating an environment where every tool and feature is placed exactly where you need it. And by adopting a clean and spacious design, Kittle ensures that you're not overwhelmed by a myriad of options, but rather gently guided towards the tools that matter most. For example, now when you log in, your home screen displays just three sections. We have your recent projects, trending templates, and additional tools. Then on the left-hand side of the screen is a sidebar where you can navigate your account, community, and access your settings. And to create a new project from scratch, simply click the new project button in the upper right corner of the screen. And this allows you to create a custom sized artboard for specific use cases and projects. However, what I love to do is start with a pre-made template. This cuts down on design time and lets me focus on tailoring the details to truly reflect my creative vision. And you can view all of the templates a couple ways. First, within the trending templates section on the homepage, click where it says show all, or you can click in the sidebar where it says templates. Both will take you to the full template library where you can browse Kittle's pre-made templates and filter your search by a wide range of topics to help narrow your focus for a specific project. You can also scroll down to preview the various pre-made templates as well. Now, there are a lot to choose from, and one feature I like is if you find a template that you like and you don't want to forget about it, hover your mouse over that preview, and then towards the upper right corner of that preview, you'll see some icons. Click the one in the middle, and that will bookmark the template and add it to your bookmarks library, which you can access here in the sidebar. And by bookmarking your favorite templates, you build a personalized library of design that inspires you. And when starting a new project, you can quickly revisit these saved templates rather than searching through the entire library again. Then, once you find a template that you want to use, you can either click on the preview to be taken directly to the Kittle web-based editor, or you can hover your mouse over it and once again in the upper right corner, click the little eye icon and this opens a preview of the template where you can get some more info about it, as well as take a closer look before you use it. Then if you decide you wanna use it, simply click that little button that says use this design, and you'll be taken to Kittle's updated state-of-the-art web-based editor, where you'll see the template has been added to your artboard and is ready for you to start editing. But if you've used Kittle before the update, you'll notice that they've cleaned up the editor's interface as well, making it a lot more streamlined and distraction-free. And on that note, let me give you a quick tour of the new web-based editor. So the new editor is still familiar, but Kittle has compounded some of the editing features to really streamline the design process. Now, the toolbar on the left-hand side of the screen is still the same. You still have access to all the great tools like the templates, which is currently selected and showing, but here you could still add text images, textures, additional brand kits, and even use AI. Then on the right, you'll see your project colors as well as the color palette selector and mock-up tools. This will display by default, but when you select an element on your artboard, the design settings for that element will display here. Then towards the bottom of the screen, you could choose a selector like the mouse pointer to move around the editor. You can create a custom sized artboard or add custom shapes to your project. You could also add comments, undo and redo your changes, and zoom in and out of the artboard. 
And speaking of that, shifting our focus to the middle of the screen, we have the artboard itself, where you'll see the template has been added to that artboard, and it's also where you'll make all of your design edits. Then if you click on the title of the artboard there in the upper left corner, you can actually reposition it across the entire project. And this comes in handy whenever you're working on multiple artboards at once, which I'll show you how to do in just a bit. Now, another thing I wanna point out is if you look towards the left-hand side and the top of the artboard, you'll see some rulers to help you align and guide your design elements. This is new, at least a new default feature that you could turn off and on, and I'll show you how to do that in greater detail in just a few moments. Then the artboard itself is still 100% customizable right here in the editor. You also still have access to your artboard toolbar where you can open the AI Copilot, you can export the project, and more. You can also duplicate your artboards by clicking this icon in the toolbar, and this essentially copies the artboard and adds it to your project. Then if we resituate our view, we can't really see both artboards. Well, this is where the zoom features come into play. Towards the bottom of the screen, if you click on that percentage, you'll be presented with some zoom options, and the ones I like to use are the fit to content, fit to artboard, and fit to selection. So first, if we select fit to content, you'll see the keyboard shortcut next to it there as well. This zooms out and fits our view to all of the content in the project. The next, if we select fit to artboard, this focuses solely on the artboard that is selected. Then finally, if you click on a specific element within the template and then select fit to selection, it zooms in on that particular element that is selected within the template on the artboard. Just a quick tip on how to stay organized and on track when designing with Kittle. Another cool tip, if you have two artboards open in a project, you could transfer elements from one artboard to the other. Simply click on an element, drag and drop, and voila. You can mix, match, edit, whatever, all between artboards right here in your project. Now, I don't really want two of the same images on this artboard, so to undo changes, if you recall, simply click that little undo icon in the toolbar at the bottom of the screen, and it reverts the change. Okay, next, remember the rulers towards the top and left of your artboards? Well, you can do some pretty cool things with them. First, you can access the ruler settings by clicking the menu icon on the left-hand side of the screen in that toolbar, and then open the view tab, and here you could toggle some view options for the editor, one of them being the ruler and guides. And if you don't want it on, just flip that switch off. I like the rulers, so I'm gonna keep them on. Then one cool thing you do here is you could drag each ruler and create your own guides within your artboards, giving you the ability to create custom horizontal or vertical guides, helping with precise placement while you're designing. Then to remove them, simply drag them back to the rulers or you can click on each one and then press delete on your keyboard and both ways will remove those ruler lines. Another view option is the grid. So once again, let's open the menu in the toolbar and then open the view tab and this time toggle the grid on by flipping that switch. And we now have proper grid lines to help align our design elements in the artboard. There's also this little slider in the view tab and moving it right to left changes the size of your grid within the artboards. Another quick tip, staying here in the menu section, you can change the entire interface to dark mode by flipping that switch on. And do this if you prefer a darker interface, which can be easier on the eyes, especially on larger screens. And it helps with rulers and guides as well, at least in my opinion it does. The lines seem to show up better against the darker screen. Just my personal preference. Okay, next, I wanna show you some of Kittle's AI updates. In the fast-paced world of digital design, efficiency and creativity go hand in hand, and that's where Kittle's AI-powered tools step in, transforming the way designers work by automating tedious tasks and enhancing creative possibilities, starting with what Kittle calls their AI Copilot, and to access it, click on what it is that you want to edit, and I just have the entire artboard selected for this example. Then, within that toolbar, click the sparkle icon, and this opens the Copilot, and it's like your little AI design sidekick. 
Now, for the sake of time, I'm not gonna go into detail on each one of these tools, but I do wanna show you one of their new ones, which is the Restyle with AI feature. And all you'll do is select Restyle, and what this does is it will restyle our project in any style we tell it. So in that field provided, type what style you want the template to be, and let's try watercolor style. Then below that, there are three options for the style strength, and this determines how strong the style is applied to the image. Low, medium, and high are your options, and I'll keep it at medium. Then whenever you're ready, click the generate button, and keep in mind that this costs one credit to send through, and it takes a few seconds to actually generate. I wasn't waiting longer than 20 seconds, but let me fast forward really quick so you don't have to sit here, and boom, check that out. That's actually a lot better than I expected. Wow, the watercolor style is really coming through, and it's using the same template as before. I love it. Another new AI tool that I wanna to show you is accessible in the toolbar. So on the left-hand side of the screen, find the Kittle AI menu item. And this is also where you can access some additional AI tools, including the design generator. And clicking this allows you to generate designs from a simple text prompt. And from here, you're presented with a little guided interface where first you'll select what you wanna make, and I'll select a poster. Then below that in the field provided, type what the poster is for, and let's just say a book titled The Big Thing. Next, you can determine the styling, and this is optional, but you could single out two colors to use or add a color palette in that field there. And then finally, clicking that drop down allows you to select the style type, and there are a handful to choose from, but let's go with vintage. Then once everything is set, click the generate button, and the AI gets to work and generates four options for us to choose from. Now, this took about 15 seconds to generate, but let me fast forward again really quick and check that out. Four AI generated posters based on that simple text prompt. Then if you click any of these here, they are added to the project as its own artboard and you can edit and design it as you see fit right here. Now, keep in mind that as I'm filming this, the AI design generator is still in beta, so I'm sure Kittle will enhance this and we'll get even better results. But as of now, this is a great tool to help streamline your design process and workflow. All right, so that's a quick overview of Kittle's new interface. There are still a lot of things you can do with the new and improved editing tools, which I'll be sure to cover in future videos, but I hope you found this video helpful and it sparked some creativity for your next project. Also, if you're considering Kittle but haven't purchased it yet, check out the link in the video description below. I personally love Kittle for my blog and YouTube projects, so if you're looking for a more affordable and budget-friendly web-based design tool, you can't go wrong with Kittle. I hope you found this walkthrough helpful. There's a ton of functionality in Kittle from managing projects and templates to utilizing powerful tools like the background remover and image upscaler. So take some time to explore the different tools and features and see what Kittle can do for your design process. And as always, if you have any questions about Kittle, please leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer. So with that being said, enjoy exploring Kittle and happy designing. So that's gonna do it for this video. If you found it helpful, I'd greatly appreciate it if you would like, comment, share, and subscribe to the Blog With Ben YouTube channel. Also, if you're looking to start a blog, check out these two videos on how to build, grow, and monetize a WordPress blog. They'll walk you through the entire process step by step. And as always, your support means a great deal to me and my family, and for that, I thank you. So with that being said, I'll see you in the next video, and thanks for watching.